Hey everyone, it's Michael here with GoodyReader.com and today I'm going to give you a review of the Kobo desktop software. This has been out for a while, a lot of people are just unaware that it exists. Uh, all you have to do is just download it from the main Kobo website, just into Google type Kobo desktop software. In this video I'll include a link for a direct download. Uh, why you would want this software? Well, let's say that you just like reading ebooks on your laptop, on your tablet, on your PC and so on. So this is a way that you can buy books, read them, and control your e-reader all in one piece of software. So e-reader setup, you just plug your Kobo into here and you can manage the device. My books, this is the menu where all of the books that are stored in a cloud as denoted by the icon here and books that you've downloaded to your PC which don't have a download icon. You can click on the most recent book that you've actually opened and it appears in the navigation bar here and shop Kobo which is the main page. Now all these little icons they don't really do too much. It basically goes to like your account settings on Kobo. Preferences basically just are the language settings of the app. Let's take a look at how this looks. So. This is pretty well a mirror image of the main Kobo website if you were to visit like Kobo.com. This is basically how it looks. So you can see that because it's based on the Kobo website, there's a lot of negative space on the corners here. It's not effectively taking a proper use of a screen real estate. But we can click on a book here, the latest uh, Lee Child book. As you can see here, the price, add to cart, buy now, add to wish list, preview now, which will open up a preview window, save preview. You can just sort of do this just so you can kind of get a sense to see how this is. So during the preview window, you can actually increase the size of the font if you want. Go from like one column to two column view. It's kind of cool. Related titles, books in the series. A lot of uh, Kobo has always done recommendation uh, engines uh, very well. And then you have user reviews. So my books is pretty well where you're gonna spend the vast majority of time. You know, you're downloading this to read. So books is uh, automatically flagged here, but you can click on related reads and you can select books that are in your library and it'll give you recommended reads. So this is uh, pretty well how a book will look. Uh, there's many options that you can employ to configure it, but let's check out how you churn pages first. You can see that here and here, you can click on this or touch, you know, if your laptop has a touch screen, you can just gesture here. But if you're on your computer, you can actually scroll down with your mouse and get an infinite scroll system, which is kind of cool. Here is the table of contents. This is where you, all of your annotations are, notes that you've made in this particular book. There's a gear icon, which is basically for settings. You can adjust the text size of the book of like, you know, the, the font. You can select what font you want from Times New Roman to Arial, or you can just stick with publisher's default, which is what I like to do. You can change the margins. So depending on the screen size of your device, you can configure it to be pretty well as full screen as you can possibly get it. Line spacing, how much space there is between particular words. So we can just set it there. There's theme modes, so white background, black text. You got this mode, and then dark mode, black background, white text. There's page setup, so we're on single page, but we can do it on a double page spread. Again, it's, it's personal preference. So. What can you do while you're in a book? Well, a lot. I mean, aside from just reading it and changing your reading experience, you can right click with your mouse. You can do a highlight, but there's only one highlight color available. You can add a note. 
I always miss socks. And then it will appear here automatically, which is cool. It will also sync, if you click the sync button here, it will actually copy all of this to your, if, you know, this same ebook on multiple devices. So if you now load this book on the Kobo e-reader, all those notes will appear, all these highlights will appear uh, on any page that you, you know, and so if I have a Kobo Forma, for example, and I load this book, all the notes will still be there. All the highlights that I've made on Kobo Desktop will still be there. So it's just a, it's a, it's a nice little way that you could uh, change the reading experience on one platform, and it applies to many. So you can add, you can look at this word up in the dictionary, and you you can see here there's multiple languages. German, Spanish, French, Italian, Dutch, Portuguese, I believe that's Japanese. Uh, you can also look the word up on Google and Wikipedia. One of the cool things here is you can actually translate and not many e-reading companies have this in their desktop apps. So the same languages. Dutch, you know, English to uh, German, so on. A lot of different combinations. Uh, so when it comes down to it, uh, the Kobo desktop for PC uh, works as intended. You know, the store could use a lot of work, you know, in terms of making it fill up the screen. There's really no way to really do it. Um, you know, reading is, is okay. There's really nothing sort of wrong with it. Supports all of your books. You can go full screen and kind of just like get rid of most of the UI. As you can see here, it sort of disappears. But as you're turning pages, this sort of appears. But it makes it a little bit more intuitive to like read, which is kind of cool. So this has been a review of the Kobo desktop. Let me know what you guys think about it. And for goodyreader.com, my name is Michael. Everybody take care.